Hey kids, Merry Christmas! We are in the celebration week for Courageous. Now, because this is such a special time of year, as you can see, I have got my ugly Christmas sweater on to celebrate, right? Those are always fun. And you got a little decoration there on my head. Do you guys like getting dressed up for Christmas? How many of you guys like Christmas? <gasps> ah! Yeah, so cool. What's your favorite part? Huh? So many good parts, right? Christmas trees are great. Hot chocolate's great. All kinds of things like that. Well, believe it or not, Courageous So ties in with Christmas because the story of Christmas has a couple of really courageous people in it, Mary and Joseph. Look at this, right? This picture is very famous. You've seen this before. There's, they're in the manger, right? It's, it's Mary and Joseph and there's Jesus in the manger. So we're gonna take a look at this story in God's word to see what made them so courageous and how they saw God be really big and how this totally relates to all of you guys that can learn from this and be courageous and see God big in your lives too. So we'll get into the story because it's not Christmas without talking about the story of Jesus's birth. That's what it's for, right? Christ, Christ, Christmas, Christmas. Celebrate the birth of Jesus. Okay, so let's go in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1 and a verse 26. Luke is about the last third of your Bible. If you've got a Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Oops, I already went too far. I'm going the wrong way. What is wrong with me? Okay, uh, you go from, I'm in Romans, so i got to go the other way. From Romans to Acts and keep going past John, right, uh, to Luke. Luke chapter 1 and in verse 26, okay, it says, Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Man, this is such a great thing. Can you imagine if you ever saw an angel? You know what it says about angels? Sometimes the angels are invisible. They're spirit beings. And sometimes they appear as people. And it says in the Bible that they can show up just as normal people and you don't even know it that they're, they look like people, and it says that you could be entertaining an angel and you don't even know it, right? There's a couple times I, I think I've seen angels that way. Anyway, <clears throat> so an angel shows up to Mary and says that she is favored by God and that, the, that blessed is she among women. So this is kind of like, hey, it's probably the first time that she ever saw an angel. So a lot of times when people see angels, they're like, ah, what is that? Anyway, but highly favored. You know what? You and I are highly favored by God too. Favor means grace of God. God, it's God being for you when you don't deserve it at all. He's always for you, always in your corner, always fighting for you. So you have favor from God too. So we can look at this and learn a lot about how God can work. So it says, <clears throat> rejoice, rejoice. This is a time of rejoicing. I love to celebrate. And when we see God do big things, we should celebrate and praise the Lord in that. So he's telling her, that. So then we keep reading in verse 29, it says, when she, Mary, saw him, the angel, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting was this? She's going, why? Why am I so special? I don't feel special. Sometimes you guys probably thought that. You're like, I don't feel very special, but God says you're special. And we want to believe that, that you are favored, just like God's word says. So she's wondering why they said that, because <clears throat> she's thinking, who am I? And then in verse 30, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor. Again, we see it again, grace, favor, God being for you, the Lord <clears throat> with you. Blessed are you among women, is what it says. And then it says in verse 20, oh, she troubled. Sorry, I, I read that again. Anyway, doesn't hurt to read it twice. And then it says, 
uh, in verse 30. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, in your belly, and bring forth a son, and sh shall call his name Jesus, that she has favor, and that the, the baby in her belly would be called Jesus, the promised Savior. So then we'll keep reading in verse 32. It says, <clears throat> the angel's still talking. It says, he will be great and be called son of the highest. That Jesus would be son of the highest. The highest is God. That's who the highest is. That Jesus would be called son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his, in his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I don't know a man? She's like, I don't, I'm not married yet. How am I going to have a baby? And then it says, and the angel answered to her and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age and is now in the sixth month for her to, uh, who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. That's the really important thing here. So what happens is the angel says, she's saying, how can I have a baby? I'm not married yet. And the angel says, God's bigger. God's going to put the baby in you. And then the angel says, for with God, nothing is impossible. Guess what? That's still the same for you and for me. You might be facing hard things because this was a hard thing that she, that she was about to do, give birth to the Savior, right? She had to teach him and raise him and teach him God's word and protect him and that kind of thing. That was kind of a hard thing she had to do. But the angel was saying, for with God, nothing is impossible. Then we're going to go to the last part, which is in verse 38. It says, Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Man, we want to be like that. You know what it means, maid servant of the Lord? She's saying, Lord, I want to serve you for life. I'm all yours. I'm all yours. I'm going to serve you for my whole life is what maid servant meant. And then it says, be it to me according to what you speak, according to your word, God, the word of God. Man, we want to be that like that, don't you? I want to be like that. I'm your maid servant or man servant, whichever. I am your servant, God. I want to serve you for life because you know what maid servant means? It's somebody that volunteers to serve for life because the person they're serving takes way better care of them than they took care of themselves. So when you say, I want to be your servant for life, God, it's saying, I'm trusting you to take care of me because you will take way better care of me than I could even take care of myself. So we want to say that because when we do, we see that nothing is impossible for God. Because in our own limitations, there's only so many things we could do. We've talked about that, right? There's stuff like, I'm so small, but God is big. So ordinary people like you and like me, can do extraordinary, amazing things because with God, nothing is impossible. So see how great this story is. And she gave birth to Jesus. And guess what? It changed the world because when Christ came, we can be saved. We can believe on him, believe he's the son of God, believe God raised him from the dead. It says whenever you do that, that you get saved. You get Holy Spirit inside of you and you become a child of God and you have eternal life and nothing you can do can mess that up. No matter what you mess up in life, you will still always be a child of God, right? So that's what happened when Jesus came. What a wonderful, wonderful thing, right? Anyway, guys, isn't that exciting? The story of Christmas and how courageous Mary and Joseph were. We can be that too because we can say, I'm all yours, God. I'm serving you. Nothing is impossible with you. So today on our big celebration day, this is a time where each of you guys can share your stories about what God's done for you. And you knew people that have come to visit. How exciting. You can all sign up for the next fellowship series. The next fellowship series is called Bread of Life. And we're going to learn all about 
Christ and how we can have a relationship with him. So you don't want to miss it because this has been fun, right? Okay, everybody ready to share their stories about what God's done for them? Sweet, awesome. Let me close with prayer. Father, I come before you right now and thank you and praise you for each and every one of these amazing kids that belong to you. Help them each day to see more and more that nothing is impossible for you, God, that you can be there for them, that it's your favor, your grace, that you love them unconditionally and you are never going away. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Amen. Love you guys so much. Can't wait to see you in the next series.